I am cold steel fueled by the blood of saints and angels. Howdy. Time to bring some peace to a lawless land. Is one of you backing me up or what? Back ye demons! Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'll show you how to play Ash. Um, so this champion is pretty straightforward with a very simple kit, so it's highly recommended for beginners and for someone who's looking to learn the ADC role. So her passive guys, her auto attacks and her abilities will apply frost onto the enemy champions, basically meaning that they will slow. This also works on minions. And when you auto attack someone with frost on them, then you will deal bonus damage based on how much crit you have. And crit on Ash is more of a guaranteed stat instead of being RNG. So that's a pretty big plus on this champion. And when you crit on this champion, uh, you don't deal more damage. Instead, you slow for more. Um, so you want to be starting with a W1. So you're gonna shoot a volley of arrows in a cone in front of you and they will of course also go people but keep in mind though that it can be body blocked by the minions so you want to make sure that the champions are not hiding behind the minions when you use it it's very good for long range poke and it does cover a pretty big area as well so if there are no minions in between then it's pretty much a guaranteed hit because it's very very hard to dodge it. So Ash can be a pretty big lane bully in the early game depending on who the support is, who you have as a support and who you're playing against. And her auto attack range is also pretty decent so you get to poke the opponent a lot. Your Q passive guys, um, you will get stacks as your auto attack and once you are at 4 stacks then you can activate this uh, ability here, your Q, which works as an auto attack reset and then you get a lot more attack speed. You also get more damage. So this is like your main DPS spell in team fights and extended fights because if you get to this point then you have insane amount of damage. And your E is a global ability that can be used anywhere on the map. It's used to reveal people. Uh, you can use this to check for the enemy jungler. Even if you don't scout him with this ability, you can see which camps are up and then try to guess where he's at. In the later stages of the game, you can also use this to scout for the objectives or the brushes so you know that your team doesn't have to face check and potentially end up dying so they give away objectives. Of course, this frost passive is a huge part of Ash, guys. Um, as I mentioned early on, as you get more crit, instead of this stat being an RNG on Ash, it's more like a guaranteed damage. Very important to know, so it's different from the other AD carries. And when you do crit though, you slow for more instead of dealing more damage. The crit is still a very important stat on this champion, as it does increase your damage, it is guaranteed, and you also get to slow for more. So when you play her in the lane guys, you try to poke people with your decent range auto attacks. You can start with your W first to slow them, and then you can auto attack afterwards so they also get slowed even more. And this champion is very good at 
I think because she has permanent slows with the auto attack guys, so if you play against immobile comps or something, then Ash can be really really good. Just keep in mind that she is immobile, she has absolute zero mobility, so you're going to struggle a lot against assassins unless you have a support who can defend you. Like Lulu pairs up pretty well with her, also hard engage supports. Like Leona or Nautilus because of her ultimate, so you have some really high kill potential as well. Oh, we saw Jack's top side, so we need to back off. So that's how you want to use that E, guys. We could have potentially died right here if I did not use that E, so you really want to make sure that you use this ability. Not on cooldown, but when you suspect that the enemy jungle might be here, or you want to protect your allies from dying to an unexpended gank, then you can pop that E. Show them where the enemy jungle is, so they can back off in time. Almost have level 6 though. Not quite there yet. I got the executioners early on this game here, because I'm playing against the healing support, and for some reason... So many AD carries skip out on this item here. Thing is guys, if you have an enchanter support then they can buy that anti-healing item instead and if they do that then you don't have to itemize for it. But if they don't buy it then you can get that executioners and then just sit on that item. You don't have to upgrade it. But you just need that instant anti-healing against the Soraka. Now we got that ultimate, so that's another global ability on this champion. Arrow that will stun based on how far it traveled, it also deals damage, so this is what you use to catch out people with. You hit somebody with this and they will be stunned. The further it travels, the longer the stun will be, up to a cap of course. You hit someone in the mid game with this, if it's a squishy then it's almost a guaranteed kill unless they have cleanse or QSS. Um, it does. It is a pretty big AoE ability, but at the same time, it's also pretty easy to dodge if they can see you use it in time. So try to make sure that you are staying out of vision when you use it, either in the fog of war or camping in the brushes somewhere, and just wait patiently. And it's also easier to hit people if you are in a straight line in the lane, so for example from the base to the mid lane, uh, enemy champion. Instead of trying to aim for them from the bot lane to mid lane, because that's a lot easier for them to dodge. But when you use it, also keep in mind if they have any movement abilities up or summoners, because they will be able to react in time. It is pretty slow. That being said though, um, it is also going to deal a little bit of damage to nearby targets. So 
Oh, that's a nice ultimate. And she is down, so this is how oppressor you can be against immobile champs. Alright, got that tower plate gold. The executioner is very very good against Soraka, so you really want to make sure that you get that into her at least. You play against these healing supports like a Soraka, Sona, Yumi, then you want to get anti-healing. If your support is getting the anti-healing item, then you don't have to waste the gold on that guys, but Otherwise, it's really good to get that execution as early on, and then you sit on that item, you do not upgrade it because you want to prioritize your main items first, so you don't delay, delay those because you are very reliant on those power spikes. I have no idea what Katarina is doing. Some people really like to greet for those uh, tower blades. It is not worth it if you have to end up dying for it guys. Then you're going to lose out the waves and then you might lose tower blades as well. On top of that you're also giving 300 gold to the opponent for free. So that's a bit int. Now the ultimate is up though. When your ultimate is up guys, you can call for your jungler to come bot lane and help, because it is pretty much a free kill. And since Sao is coming, use that ultimate early on for maximum stun. There we go, and since Sao is coming in. And we got both of them, so this is how you can play it, I tried to buy of some time by going in 1 versus 2 so they tried to trade back because they knew that Lux wasn't here but they did not think about Sin Sao. This is fine to do against some comps though but if you're playing against a level 6 Leona then you do not want to do this because you can just chances you and burst you down. It's a lot safer to do against enchanters. Well, the mid game pretty much started for us at this point. Normally, playing ADC guys, you want to be in the mid lane because it is safest for you. So you let your mid lane go to the side lane and then you just DFK mid, play around the objectives, get the farm you can, scale up, get your items and then you can start carrying. Oh, that was a bit unfortunate. I was not patient enough. I thought that we could kill her without. And there's the Jax coming in as well. It's a bit unfortunate that I missed the ultimate right there. Um, but yeah, we did end up getting all of them, so it's not too bad. The thing is, if it is close range, then your ultimate is barely going to CC them. And it's also... bit harder to land because they can if it's against a mobile champion because they can move around really fast and then you don't really get that hit unless you try to slow them first with your passive with your w and then you can follow up with the ultimate my team is playing this out really good playing we push that ball lane and then we took the objective I'm gonna head straight for the mid lane as we do once the laning phase is over. Mid lane is the safest lane for the AD carry. You just stay mid guys and then you farm and when the objective is up then you try to get some picks and then turn that into a free objective and that way you try to snowball the game and get for that, go for that end. When you team fight on Ash, 
Same as every other AD carry, you stay in the back line, get hit whoever is closest to you. But you can also look for picks on this champion because of your ultimate, so when your ultimate is up then you want to look for kills. If possible try to use it off cooldown, your ultimate. As it has so much impact in solo queue, especially in the early stages where people don't have QSS. So even if you only get the flashes out, then it's still super worth it. That's a really nice block by Silas and apparently I still got hit by that stun somehow because it definitely looked like I was out of range. We are pushing S4 man bot side. I think Shogat should have recalled first so he was healthy for this push but they don't have science ultimate up anymore so they don't really have any kill pressure onto us. Just gonna go ahead and recall here. They're a bit too overextended. They did see Jax on the ward, so they should definitely have backed off. So that was definitely a misplay. We got what we wanted to. We got that tower guy, so we just had to back off. Yeah, people do end up greeting in solo queue a lot. It happens all the time, actually. I also do it sometimes, so. It is what it is, let's go ahead and take the rip off here. Rip off of course makes you so good at kiting, you already have slows on your passive guys but... Rip off is always, always nice to have on the ADC, so you definitely want to give that to the AD carry unless he's running it down in the mid game. Or if the jungler is playing an AD carry himself then he can also take it but most of the time you want to give that to the carry. Oh that's a bit unfortunate. Soraka Silence really caught me off guard right there because I could have went for that 1 versus 2. But I was not able to dodge Silence stun because she silenced me so... That's a good combo by them. They're still losing a lot though because they send everybody topside so Silence is pushing bottom lane. And they also lost their AD carry. Now Silas is going for the inhibitor right but it's only 18 minutes in the game so it's actually a bit too early to get it. Because the Baron is not up yet so you're not able to get anything out of it. So now we are actually a little bit more pressured because we have to get something because now the bot lane None of us will be able to farm bot lane anymore because that's a super minion wave coming from our side So it's constantly gonna push towards the enemy base so The enemy champions will have permanent CS and XP At the bottom side so we lost one entire lane So we have to get something now, which could be in the top side. The dragon's also up. Science ultimate is down. I'm almost out of mana, so you definitely want to be careful with spamming your abilities. Oh, Lox is going down. The dragon is up, so we also want to go for that. Jax is also going for it. As we could see on the minimap, so we want to move. Unstoppable. 
And he went for 1 versus 2 for some reason, so I guess he's just gonna donate that for free and we will take it. And the red buff is also up, so let's go ahead and take that one as well. Uh, you can go for Hurricane, which is actually really good on Ash. You can also go for Phantom Dancer. Phantom Dancer is much higher single target DPS guys, so that's why among high elo players and pro players, this is the one that's built the most on Ash right now. But if you go for Hillbow, for example, then you can also go for the Ruinance Hurricane because it's going to work with your passive. It is nice having some AoE slow uh, with your Frost passive and the Runan Turricane, but get higher single target DPS with the Phantom Dancer. Much better at shredding that frontline target. Dragon Slayer also feels insanely good on oh, Ash, you get a lot of attack speed. Then of course that true damage, so it is the item that will give you the highest possible damage from a mythic item. And then you can get shield bow if you are playing against a lot of assassins where who are looking to burst you down. And then gale force is also fine if you need some extra mobility guys, you get that extra dash on your item, so you have that as active. But for the most part, you either want to go for the Kraken Slayer or you want to get the Shield Bow. These are the two most popular mythic items on Ash. Got that Soraka down. They don't have anything to stop our CC with, so when they get caught by that ultimate, then they're going to die. You can pretty much go for the end here. Their team members are down, the AD carry is down, so they don't have any wave clear anymore. And they did their FF, so that was the Ash guide. I hope this was helpful. As always, see you guys in the next one.